Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me once again. My name is Michael. Um, we are currently in the book of Joshua right now as we're reading through the Word of God um, in the Bible. Um, I am starting this video a little bit later today and also apologize about yesterday. I didn't wake up until like 5.15, kept snoozing my alarms, and then I didn't, and I got to be out of the door by the latest of 5.30. So I didn't have any time. Um, and then today, my wife had an interview, um, at the VA clinic for a job that she's trying to get. Um, so I had to show up to work a little bit later today so she could do that so I can keep an eye on the little one that's behind me over here. I'm going to see her head. Nope, she's over there, right on the other side of the couch. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so yeah, I'm starting the video a little bit later today, but wanted to make sure to get it at least in. And I don't want to miss two days again based off of timing. Um, so yeah, doing chapters 14, 15, and 16 this morning. Um, but in regards to the Israelites of what we've been reading, Joshua getting or being put in charge pretty much um of the israelites to be their messenger from god to have that communication from god um leading them through what is now israel um but getting their inheritance in the lands that was promised to them by god to abraham jacob and isaac um so as we're continuing to read through these this is continuing to show where and how the tribes had distributed the lands, came over, took over the lands, and was given to them from God. Now, if you really think about it and look into the history of it, there's so many times where the Israelites shouldn't have won. and But because they were in line with what God was wanting, this gave them the ability for God to fight for them, thus being victorious over their enemies on a continuous basis. Now, as we continue to read through the Old Testament, you're going to see as the Israelites start to wane away from God, wane away from leaning on the Lord um, and relying on him and keeping him in the first of things and putting him above all things and relying on him for all things. And this starts to scatter Israel. Um, it starts to have other nations come over and put them back under subjugation and this isn't what god wanted for them but god told them if, if you abide in me i will be here and i will protect you but if you stray if you stray away from me you're gonna suffer the consequences um in very very short terms that's pretty much what was said um obviously we can go back and 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 read exactly what god had stated that he wanted from the Israelites. But thank the Lord that the Israelites were so stubborn because at the time when Christ came and so many of the Israelites rejected Christ, it gave God the opportunity to open up that door to us, the Gentiles and the rest of the world, um, which is just in itself amazing. Israel is God's chosen people. They will always be God's chosen people until the end, until everything is remade anew. Um, but Israel really isn't in that way right now. And it's an unfortunate thing. But there will be a day when God opens up their eyes and all can see him for who he really is. And it's going to be a beautiful day. I'm not going to be here for that. That is in the tribulation period. But, and the church is nowhere in the tribulation period. Which is why I'm a firm believer in regards to pre-rapture tribulation. You go through Revelation, you don't see the church on earth at all. You see him in heaven. You see him in every, at the beginning of it until they get called up. But during the actual, like seven year tribulation period you don't see israel or the church in the tribulation set period there, there's, there's no mention of us other than what's being put up into heaven as we've been called up um, so, and that's a study all on its own um but yeah enough 
five minute rambling of nonsense, I'm sorry. Um, but so yeah, we'll go ahead and get started in. We're on chapter 14. Let me just check on the little one back here. Doing okay, baby? You doing okay? Daddy loves you. Yeah. Whoa. 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 Where'd you go? I saw you. Hi. Hi. I I see you. I love you. Daddy. I is daddy. He's carrying in. <laughs> Go sit down and watch your show, baby. Okay, so continuing. We are in chapter 14 of the book of Joshua. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just as a brief description here from Distributed for Inheritance, you can also read back to Numbers chapter 34, verses 16 to 29 to gain an understanding of this first verse here. Um, these are the inheritances that the people of Israel received in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest and, the Josh and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the people of Israel gave them to inherit. And again, you can go back to Numbers 34, verses 16 through 29, to get an understanding of what also those inheritances fall for um, if you're unaware at this point in time um, let's see here continuing from verse 2 their inheritance was by lot just as the Lord had commanded by the land of by the hand of Moses for the nine and one half tribes for Moses had given an inheritance to the two and one half tribes beyond the Jordan but to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them for the people of Joseph were true tribes Manasseh and Ephraim and no portion was given to the Levites in the land, but only cities to dwell in. With their pasture lands for their livestock and their substance, the people of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. They allotted the land. Um, and as we read through a caption of 14.4, the double portion right of the firstborn was given to Joseph's two sons. Um, you can see a note on Genesis 48-5. through five, And the Levites were given certain cities and suburbs. We can also see notes or reference back to Numbers 35, 2 and Numbers 35, verses 4 through 5. Um, now, Caleb's request and inheritance, verse 6. Then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, said to him, You know that the Lord, what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kadesh, Barnea, concerning you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. But my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden, trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said, these forty-five years since the time that the Lord spoke the word to, this word to Moses. While Israel walked in the wilderness, and now behold, I am this, eight, this day eighty-five years old. I am still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. <laughs> baby, what's the matter? What's wrong, baby? Okay. One second, we're pausing on chapter or chapter 14, verse 11. I'll be right back. Doesn't matter, baby. Come here. What are you trying to do, sweetheart? Come here, baby. No, come here. Come sit down. Come sit down, baby. Come sit down. Oh, come sit down. Come sit down. Come sit down. Daddy, you'll be down in just a minute, okay? You'll be all right. Daddy, will be down in just a minute. Ugh. Yes, and in case anybody is wondering, I have my robe wrapped around my waist. It is still early. Um, continuing, verse 11. Um, from chapter 14, I am still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then, for war and for going and coming, 
So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on the day, on that day, how the Anakim were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall drive them out, just as the Lord said. Um, okay, so recapturing verses 6 through 15. Caleb who with Joshua had brought the minority report at Kadesh Barnea, asked for and received the city of Hebron as his special inheritance. Um, still vigorous at 85 years old, he helped drive out the Anakins and later willingly gave up Hebron to the Levites and lived in the suburbs, which obviously we'll get to. Um, let's see here. Then when Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Jephaniah, for an inheritance. Therefore Hebron became the Hebron inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephaniah, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Now the name of Hebron formerly was Kiriath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, and the land had rest from war. All right, so continuing on from chapter 15. And this is a lengthy chapter. I believe it has like 64 verses, if I remember researching right, 63. So it's a lengthy one. The allotment for the tribe of the people of Judah, according to their clans, reached southward to the boundary of Edom, to the wilderness of Zin at the, farther, at the farthest south. And their south boundaries ran from the end of the Salt Sea, from the bay that faces southward. It goes out southward of the accent of Akrabim, passes along to Zin, and goes up south of Kadesh Barnea, along by Hezron, up to Adar, turns about to Karka, passes along to Asmon, goes out by the brook of, e of Egypt, and comes to its end at the sea. This shall be your south, your south boundary, and the east boundary is the Salt Sea, to the mouth of the Jordan, and the boundary on the north side runs from the bay of the sea at the mouth of the Jordan, and the boundary goes up to Beth, Hogla and passes along north of Beth Araba. And the boundary goes up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. And the boundary goes up to Deber from the valley of Achor. And so northward toward Gilgal, which is opposite the accent of Adumim, which is on the south side of the valley. And the boundary passes along to the waters of En Shemesh and ends at En Rogel. Then the boundaries go, goes up by the valley of the sons of Hinma, Hinnom at the southern shoulder of the Jebusite, that is Jer Jerusalem. And the boundary goes up to the top of the mountain that lies over against the valley of Hinnom, on the west, at the north end of the valley of Rephaim. Then the boundary extends from the top of the mountain to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, and from there to the cities of Mount Ephraim. Then the boundary bends from around to Bala, that is Kiriath Jerim, and the boundary circles west to Bala, to Mount Sair, passes along to the northern shoulder of Mount Jirim, that is Chesalon, and goes down to Beth Shemesh, and passes along by Timna. She's gotten into my wallet. Uh, verse 11, the boundary goes out to the shoulder of the hill north of Ekron, and the boundary bends around to Shekaron, and passes along the Mount Bala, and goes out to Jabneel. Then the boundary comes to an end of the sea. On the west boundary was the Great Sea, with its coastline. This is the boundary around the people of Judah, according to their clans. Okay, so, Judah's southern border extended from the southern end of the Salt Sea, the Dead Sea, westward to the river of Egypt. Her northern border extended from the northern tip of the Dead Sea, to the Mediterranean, these representing the eastern and western limits. Um, okay, and then as what from what we're about to read, Othniel made a second assault on Debir after Joshua's lightning attack. He later became a judge of Israel. So continuing on from verse 13. According to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, he gave, he gave to Caleb, the son of Jephaniah, a portion among the people of Judah, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. 
And Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, Shashai, and Ahiman, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak. And he went from there, and he went from there against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir formerly was Karioth Safir. And Caleb said, Whoever strikes Karioth Safir and captures it, to him will I give Asha, my daughter, as wife. Akish, Aksha. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, captured it, and he gave him Aksha, his daughter, as wife. When he came to him, she urged him to ask her father for a field. And she got off of her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you want? <laughs> Baby, what the matter? Well, you can't get anything else in Daddy's wallet, sweetheart. There's nothing in there for you. You play with those things. You don't need anything else. You're okay. Hold on. Sorry, one second. Can't lose Daddy's social, though. <coughs> So that was what we were reading. Othniel made a second assault on the Deber. Um, from verses 19 to 62, we're about to read. The cities of Judah are listed by four geographical areas. The south, the Shephala, western foothills, the hill country, and the desert or wilderness of Judea that slopes down to the Dead Sea. Um, she said to him, give me a blessing. Since you have given me the land of the Negev, give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. This is in the this is the inheritance. Uh, excuse me, one second. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the people of Judah, according to their clans. The cities belonging to the tribe of the people of Judah in the extreme south, toward the boundary of Edom. Where Kabzeel, Eder, Jagur, Hina, Demanoa, Adada, Kadesh, Hazor, and Ithnan, Ziph, Telam, Bealoth, Hazor, Hadath, Kiriath, Hezron, that is Hazor, Amam, Shema, Maloda, Hazar, Gada, Hushmam, Beth, Pelet, Hazar, Shaul, Beersheba, Biziothia, Bala, Iam, Izem, Eltalad, Chesel, Horma, Ziglag, Madmana, Sansana, Labath, Shilhem, Ain, and Rimon, and all twenty nine cities were their village with their villages. Whew, tongue just blah, 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 blah. Um, the cities are twenty and nine, since thirty eight locations are listed. Perhaps nine of these were too small to be called cities, or may they have been in part of Simeon's territory. Um, just as a little extra info on that, what we just read. Um, and in the lowland, okay, here we go again. Eshtoal, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, and Ganim, Tapua, Anam, Jarmuth, Adum Alam. Daddy will be there in just one minute, baby. I promise. We're almost done. We're almost done, baby. Um, Adalam, Sokoa, Aza, Azika, Sharayim, Adithayim, Gedara, Gedarathayim, 14 cities with their villages. Zanen, Hadasha, Migdal Gad, Dillion, Mizpah, Jachtil, Lachish, Bazkath, Eglon, Kabon, Lamam, uh, Chitlish, Gedriuth, Beth Dagon, Nama, and Makedah, 16 cities with their villages. And then Libna, Ashtar, Ashan, Ifta, Ashna, Nizib, Kaila, Achzib, and Marisha, nine cities with their villages. Ekron with its towns and its villages, from Ekron to the sea, all that were by the side of Ashdod and their villages. 
Ashdod, its towns and its villages, Gaza, its towns and its villages, to the brook of Egypt and the great sea with its coastline. And in the hill country, Shamir, Jatir, Soka, Daina, Kariath, Sana, that is Debir, Anab, Eshtiamo, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, Gilo, eleven cities with their villages. Arab, Duma, Eshon, Janim, Beth Chapua, Afkia. Your turn. What do you want your turn for? Daddy, help. What do you need help with? You need help? Come here. Okay. You want to come read with Daddy? Okay. Okay. You come read with Daddy? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. We come read with Daddy. Um, let's see. We're right over here, okay? So, Arab, Duma, Eshan, you just look pretty. Look at you. Look at that beautiful little face. What? I know. Janim, Beth Tapua, Afka, Hamta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities with their villages. Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Juta, don't, no, put that back, put that back. We're going to put that <laughs> over there. We're right here. We got to leave it on this page, though. What? Yeah, and then we just got one chapter. We're almost done, baby. What? Um, let's see here. I think it was on 55. Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Juta, Jezreel, Jokdam, Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timna, ten cities with their villages. Halhol, Beth Zur, Gedor, Marath, Beth Anoth, and Eltikon, six cities with their villages. And Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath Jerim, and Rabbah, two cities with their villages. In the wilderness, Beth Rabbah, Madin, Sakaka, Nibshan, the city of salt, and Engedi, six cities within their villages. But the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the people of Judah, could not drive out. So the Jebusites dwell with the people of Judah at Jerusalem to this very day. Hey, baby, we got to go back to where Daddy was, you silly girl. Oh. Oh, yes, I know. That's, I know, Daddy's got two of them out. Well, that's Judges. Let's see, here we go. Um, let's see here. So just a little recap and reading. The city is there. Um, yeah, right, so we got all that caught up with. Um, and the men of Judah did capture the lower city, um, but only later did King David capture the upper city and eliminate the Jebusites, as we just read. And finally, um, actually, looking at it, the way that they separated it when creating the chapters and verses, because it was all just one straight through text, um, 16 and 17 kind of blend in together. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pause at chapter 16. Um, so we're going to go ahead and close these now. Okay, we close these and close these. Set them right there. Um, but we do thank you very much for joining us and reading with us um, and understanding and continuing learning of God's word and everything that happened throughout history in regards to his people, the promises made. Um and everything else of that nature. I know you should be able to. Oh, your stickers. We'll get your stickers in a minute. Um, but I do thank you. I hope God blesses your week. That you stay strong into the word and continue to read on your own time. I know. Um, but yeah, I got to take care of this little one. She is Anthony Archie. Um, but she's antsy, so again, thank you very much. I will be again here tomorrow morning. She will probably be asleep, um, as it'll be my normal I time. I know, okay, your stickers. Here's your stickers. Here's your stickers. You're welcome. Oh, you want to take them into the living room? Okay, well, we will continue our day. I'll be going back to work in an hour or so when the mama gets back. Um, but again, thank you. God bless you. I love you all, and I will see you next time. Say bye-bye.